my gosh, I'm so close to it. Please don't fall off to me. Steven, Steven, all the way to Steven. Hey, Steven, how are you, Steven? I missed you, Steven. So I think true love is um, feeling of like genuine happiness because you can be completely comfortable and uh, be yourself with this person. Hi, Miss Kim. How are you? I don't know the answer, but I'm not good. So today I'll be talking about an idea from the play Hamlet, and the t and the idea is uh, human flaws. So Hamlet argues that he does not find joy in humans because they are impermanent and imperfect. Humans are imperfect because they are dominated by both good and evil. So as a result, humans are full of flaws, but their biggest flaw is the inability of seeing their own flaws. So Hamlet is the best example of a person with flaws. So with the quote saying, Frailty, thy name is woman. On Act 1, Scene 2, Line 146. So he is complaining about Gertrude's flaw as a weak woman. And yet, he doesn't realize he himself have flaws too. So he always looking for perfection in humans, even though it doesn't exist in life. So this can also be seen in our society too. So people always complain about others making mistakes, and yet we do the same thing as others do. So this is the case because, uh, because human beings are trying to protect themselves emotionally. By doing so, we are actually lying to ourselves and making us see others, people as not very realistic. So therefore, unless we stop seeing for perfection in each other, the society and humans will always be flood. Thank you. This is so much better than Arugans. I know, right? 10 times better. I agree. Love is basically when two people okay. are together uh -huh. and they're for me, for each other. Why? Because God gave them that. Thing. Okay. A really major factor is. that in Shakespeare's play Hamlet negatively impacted the results and outcomes of the main characters, namely Hamlet. For Hamlet, religion as a societal standard was a big barrier to the way he thinks and the way, he, or rather the way he thought when it came to stuff like the actions of vindicating his father. For instance, in the scene where Claudius was alone praying, possibly for repentance, Hamlet catches him and tries to kill him, although he hesitates, quoting to himself that he might actually send his uncle to heaven and thus not fulfilling his father's wishes for revenge. Two hours later. Mm. Jenna, we have to finish the video. Okay. As said in Act 3, Scene 3, uh, lines 75 to 78, and so I am revenged, that will be scanned. A villain kills my father, and for that I, his sole son, do the same villain sent to heaven. Here he hesitates as Hamlet is actually thinking to himself on the consequences of actually fulfilling out his father's plans or not. Religion, although not a major assertion in this scene, he, uh, it, acts, it acts as some sort of barricade nonetheless to Hamlet's outright thinking as he is a thinker and as a result he actually made a choice that would eventually undergo the downfall or go, th co go through with the downfall of him and the rest of the main characters, say Horatio and a few others. In addition to that, religion is also some sort of a pressuring factor to Hamlet as his father needed him to actually avenge him because he was in purgatory and that was only as a result of him perishing before he could make his last confessions, hence his quote, I am, dis I am unhouseled, disappointed and unannelled. Uh, I would rather die than live a life full of suffering because why don't you just die and try to find out what the 
unknown is. Maybe it's something good, something better than that. No, I do not think that there is stable identity within anyone throughout their whole life because there are many ups and downs in life and that's not going to be stable. Is it better to live a life of suffering or to die and face the unknown? So this question relates to the theme of uncertainty within Hamlet. Many characters in the play, such as Claudius, uh, they fear uncertainty and they try to create certainty. They fear uncertainty because uh, uncertainty means that one cannot predict the future and thus one cannot guarantee one's physical safety. And as humans, we all have an instinctual desire to preserve our physical body. Uh, however, uh, so as humans, we tend to fear uncertainty and try to create certainty. Uh, however, this pursuit of certainty uh, contradicts the uncertain nature of life, and as such, it often leads to suffering and despair, which is shown by practically every character in Hamlet when almost everybody ends up dying anyways. So, to answer the question, when presented with the options of uh, living a life of suffering or uh, dying and facing the unknown, with that being said, I would still choose to live a life of suffering. I would choose to live a life of suffering because um, even though if the life is full of suffering, the question does not say only suffering. So I choose to interpret that there will still be moments of joy uh, and happiness in my life, regardless of how short and infrequent. Uh, these moments of joy mean that there's still happiness present in my life from which I can derive purpose, which makes life still worth living in my opinion. So when you compare the two options, they both present uncertainty to the person reading the question. The first one presents uncertainty of uh, the proportionality of pleasure to displeasure, while the second one presents uncertainty of the existence of an afterlife. So the reason I choose the first option is because it, pro it provides a certainty of life. It means that I am guaranteed to, to continue to live even if the life is unenjoyable. So like I said earlier, uh, I still choose to interpret that there will be some moments of joy, some moments of happiness, and from that I can derive purpose, and to me, uh, that makes life still worth living. Especially when, when one considers that sadness and suffering is a natural part of life. Sadness and, su uh, sadness and happiness are intermingled and intertwined. So it's a completely natural, fundamental part of life to be sad and to suffer, because without it, then it's not really life, is it? Go. You can't cheat death because when death comes to you, like you're just gonna straight up die. So, yeah, I don't believe you can cheat death. Thank you very much. One of the most bloody situations going on right now is in the Philippines, where the president is on a warpath against drug dealers, and many are being killed, whether they're guilty or not. Hamlet talks about suicide, but he's really concerned with mortality and the fact that the living world is made out of death and decay. Hamlet also worries that he that if he killed himself, he would go to hell and not heaven. Hamlet also thinks about what would happen to his loved ones if he were to kill himself and how they would react. The idea of suicide also emerges em, emerges from Hamlet's pre preoccupation with death. Although he seems to consider killing himself as an option, he does not act on the idea. Similarly, he doesn't act when he has the opportunity to kill Claudius and avenge his father. Ironically, it's this lack of action on Hamlet's part that results in his death at the end of the play. Hamlet also states that murder does not physically have a tongue, but it will find a way to speak and be present. This proves that when your time has come, death is almost inevitable and avoidable in Hamlet. When Shakespeare's play Hamlet, he introduces the idea of real and imaginary. And because these are opposite, um, most of the times maybe, uh, many people can find it um, obvious and say that, well, these two ideas are separate. They are opposite from each other. They can't be the same. Um, they must be separate. But in fact, Shakespeare shows in Hamlet that these two ideas are actually inseparable and that um, uh, splitting them would be a false dichotomy. The reason behind this is because uh, anything imaginary uh, must come from something that is real and anything that is real must come from uh, something that is imaginary. The idea is briefly introduced in Act 2, Scene 2, uh, on line 250, where Hamlet says, Oh God, I could be bounded in a nutshell and call myself a king of infinite space. Were it not, I have bad dreams. He basically says that he, if it weren't for his nightmares and his bad dreams, that he could uh, be happy. 
um, he, you can see that Hamlet um, derives real um, emotion and feeling and the feeling of unhappiness in his real life, although um, it's derived from his imaginary dreams and those dreams are not real, yet they cause him to feel unhappiness in his real life. At the end of Act 2, Scene 2, Hamlet discusses two things in his soliloquy. Um, both have to do with real and imaginary. The first one is um, he felt very guilty for the fact that he, um, when he saw the first player, he was reciting his uh, speech and he was able to um, cry real tears for a fake story because he was emotionally absorbed in that um, speech, yet he wasn't able to take uh, revenge. And the second thing that um, Hamlet talks about, he mentions um, his plans to catch Claudius and uh, receive a confession of guilt for um, Claudius killing his Hamlet's father. He plans to do this by using uh, a fake play, which is based on the real story of Hamlet's father's murder, to get real guilt from Claudius. You can see that Hamlet tries to use this idea of real and imaginary to get guilt from Claudius. Although the play is fake, it's based on a real story, which also happens to um, create a guilty conscience in um, Claudius, which, which later leads him to confess. Go. Uh, revenge is never a good idea because you'll never gain what you've lost. At the end of the day, you still lost whatever happened in the back. And I personally believe that uh, revenge is not a good idea because you're not going to get anything out of it. It's not worth it. Would you spy on a friend? And if so, under what circumstances would you decide that you would betray them? I would spy on a friend only if they were going to do something bad or if they were going to do something harmful towards themselves or others. This is when I would choose to interfere because their safety is more important than how they perceive our trust and our bond because they are what makes up the bond. I would not betray my friends because they, we have a built up trust and we have a strong bond with one another throughout the years. This question relates back to the play Hamlet when Rosencrantz and Guildenstern decide to spy on their friend Hamlet because the king asked them to do so to find out why he is acting so crazy all of a sudden. This is about human beings and how they are willing to give up their emotional ties with one another, and in this case Hamlet, for their self-interest, physical safety, and health and security. Humans are animalistic. We have instinctual desire to protect ourselves first. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are used to show that humans can compromise when our physical selves are in danger. The pair are also willing to spy on their friend because they because they are promised a king's remembrance. This relates to power because they are just ordinary citizens as we know in the story, and by gaining favor with the king, they can help advance their own motives and possibly even gain more power. And this is one of the reasons why Hamlet is so disappointed with human beings. I think as a father, he probably did what he thought was best for Ophelia. But personally, it doesn't really matter what I think. Even if I was against it, the kids are going to do what they want anyway. And instead of trying to force them to apart, I think maybe find middle ground together is probably the better solution. That's what I think. Go. I would not ask someone to go out first because I'm way too shy and I definitely don't have the courage to do that. And uh, pick up one, uh, you have beautiful eyes. Would you like to go out? Emotions are vividly ex expressed in Hamlet as characters are shown to act without thinking, acting based on emotion and acting based on the current and immediate situation. Such example can be seen when Horatio says to Hamlet on page 152, line 335, where he says, here's yet some liquor left, implying to Hamlet that I'll go with you, buddy. Even if you die, I'll die with you. And Horatio gives the story meaning, emotion and life and romance, all of which we have all expressed in one point of our life. And these are factors that drives people to do things, remember things, and empowers the bodies and our souls. And this can, this can also connect to the idea when someone passes away. It stirs the idea that people, it stirs the idea of how people are alive in our imagination despite their physical detachment from the physical world. Our memories of them uh, are alive and interactive in our minds, and our perspective of them are still very powerful. As a result, our emotions impact the, f the world in which we view the world, our emotions impact the way in which we view the world, and impact the, way the, the surrounding area in which, you know, the immediate and current situation, because emotions are very dominating and overruling over logic and reasoning. It comes prior to that. So another example of uh, emotion overruling logic and reasoning is when Claudius manipulates Laertes to get rid of Hamlet. 
Uh, he uses Laertes emotions like sorrow and anger from the loss of his father to um, twist and direct it towards Hamlet in order to get rid of him. Um, and this was uh, uh, seen in page 124 when Laertes says to cut his throat eat church. The church is a sanctuary. It's a very safe and sacred place that is well respected by everyone. The fact that Liberty is a very powerful and respectable noble is willing to sacrifice his um, morals for his emotions, the immediate emotions, demonstrates the idea of how it is hard to look beyond emotions as human beings. Our emotions are very immediate, hard-hitting, dominating, overruling, and it's very strong and important. So it compromises our sense of like logical reasoning and thought and thus it becomes very deceptive and diminishes our senses of morals and only after the emotional outburst do we realize the outcomes of our actions wow that's good to set up either barriers or concept wait oh my gosh can you start again by me by shakespeare led consequently to attention students <laughs> Wait,